This I want to just spend five minutes on because I think it's important. So there is a, the way we look at things I think needs a little bit of work. So things that are good for you in the long term aren't fun right now. Things that are fun right now ruin your life tomorrow. Think about it this way. So I could eat that burger, supersize my fries, or I could go to the gym. I'd like to eat the burger and the fries. I should fancy a burger and fries. Big fan. But going to the gym sucks, right? I hate going to the gym. Personal trainer's great. We get along. It's good times. But that half an hour is like, I can't wait till it's done. When it's done, I feel great. So I, it's worth going. But... What's the long-term play? What's the, see like, it's the difference between taking the hill or taking the, you know, the moving walk kind of thing, the motorized track, the golf cart to drive me up the hill, you know, like you see in the resorts and that sort of thing. I'd rather take the hill anytime I can, physically, psychologically, biologically, by going to the gym, okay? So, do you want the short-term payoff or the long-term payoff? And that's the thing you have to think about. There was an experiment done several years ago with children called the Marshmallow Experiment. You probably have heard of this one. Okay, it's great. It's fantastic. If you have kids, test it on them, mess with them, see what happens. Find out what kind of kid you have. And so what they did was they gave kids the choice. You can have one marshmallow now, or you can wait 45 minutes and have two marshmallows. And what they did was they followed these kids through life and the kids who chose the one marshmallow now, the instant gratification group, versus the ones who said, okay, I'll wait 45 minutes so I can get two marshmallows. Well, the delayed gratification group was substantially more, more uh, successful in, in all areas in life, not just financial. So whatever they used to measure as metrics, they were more successful. So... You know, teaching a, a child even the value of like delayed gratification and thinking that way is extremely valuable. And so I think this is like a universal law that kind of applies to everything. And, and if we could get that, you know, in our heads, even as adults, incredibly important. The other thing is understanding second order consequences. So most people, like if you think about it this way, if I buy... I started with this example earlier. I buy a 72-inch TV on debt. First of all, I did something stupid. The immediate consequence is I bought something I can't afford and I have to pay for it, and I pay interest on it, which is awesome. But then there's something else that happens. So I'm going to use, I'll just draw this out as we go here. I'll try to move it over so you guys can see it. Well, oh, it's stuck there. So it looks like this. So the first, this is not very really Okay, so the first order consequence is you buy the TV, okay? On debt. So it costs you money you don't have, and you gotta pay interest, takes money out of your pocket, kinda sucks. But that's not the worst of it. See, from there, second order consequence is, well, if I bought this TV, and I bought it on debt, how do I justify having bought the TV? I gotta get some enjoyment out of it, so I have to watch it, right? So now I watch the TV. And it goes further. Now I'm watching the TV. What am I not doing? At growing myself, making money, being in the practice, spending time getting closer to my values, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this sets up a pattern of shitty behavior that now continues on and on. So most of the times when you think about a problem, people think like, what's the immediate consequence, good or bad? But what about down the line? So when you make a decision, it's like, take it, not what's the, what's the worst case scenario, best case scenario, but then what's the best and worst if this happens? What's the best and worst if that happens? Just take it all the way down and pick it apart and you watch what happens. And this is what you typically find out. So the other thing is that these things are not... You know, they're not um, linear as, as a fact. I'll, get, I'll talk about that in a sec. One example I want to share with you. So you remember, does anyone remember Valiant Pharmaceuticals? Yeah, you probably figured you remember that. So company 
um, a, Valiance Pharmaceuticals was founded to acquire biotech companies. And they did, they acquired a ton of them, a few in Canada, a few in this area actually even. And what they did was the CEO had this model, it was really good. He went in, he bought the companies, and he killed the R&D. So they were wildly profitable for a time. And what it did was R&D is like a cash suck in a biotech company, right? But also it's where all the new drugs come from. So if you kill R&D short term, the balance sheet looks awesome. So this guy was running around getting all kinds of funding because look at you know Wall Street being just like all they wanted to see was profit. The balance sheet was incredible, right? They had tons of, of profit on the books. And so they require another company, kill R&D, more profit coming in from the existing drug sales, and that's great. And so the CEO was like a big deal, private jets, you know, courtside seats, hanging out with celebrities and all this jazz. But yeah, well, yeah. But what happens, right? You take your eyes off the engine that, first of all, there's, there's this thing played out too, because you have all these toys, you got to use them. Right? You can't have a private jet if you're flying it. What's the fun? And then so you take your eyes off the things that grew that in the first place. And so what ended up happening was patent runs out on this, somebody competitor creates something better than that, sales start to tank, and then the company just imploded because there was no R&D. So you took out the thing that drove this in the first place. You find the same story with Michael Jordan. Look at his uh, any of his nine biographies. There's a really good movie that goes through it's like he was at the top of his game. And then at a point, fame was incredible, endorsements all the time, so many things going on in his life that his game started to start, started to make mistakes. He started to make mistakes in his game. And then what he did was one of the smart ones who actually got this, cut everything out, shut down all endorsements, all speaking, all everything, and just went back and focused on the thing that created it all in the first place. And by doing that, got back to the top and stayed there. So this is what I mean about understanding second order, third order consequences. If you don't think that far out, you're asking for trouble. I'll tell you, where am I here? Yeah, I'll tell you this one. So I was, I got rid of cable because I don't, I don't still watch TV. And you should understand why when you see that. But I had to make this phone call because you have to call. You can't, you know, with Shaw, you can't just, I couldn't figure out how to do it online easily. If you want to add anything, you can do it very easily. It's one click and they'll add it to you. But if you want to cancel something, you got to go to the call center and they got to try to talk you out of it and all this jazz. So it's actually kind of funny. I was upgrading the internet that we have, so the fastest speed that was available because we do a lot of video stuff and you need good internet or it's painful to do anything with video. And so I was talking to this girl and she's like, you know, with well, this package comes with this and that and the other thing, and you get like 250 channels for like only 20 bucks. I'm like, that's great, but I don't want it. Shut that off. And it was like silence. Like, what do you mean? You go, it's, it's like it's only 20 bucks. I'm like, I know, I don't, I don't want TV. She's like, well, we can jiggle the package this way and that way, and then we can make it free. I'm like, yeah, I don't want it. Like, I don't want it. It's like, so it's free, but you don't want it? And it has, I, so I'm now having fun, so I'm like, okay, let's, let's play this out, because this is interesting. I'm like, you don't understand, if, if I have it, I'll watch it. I just kind of let that sit there for a minute in silence, right? The person just doesn't get it. Like, if I have it, I might watch it, which is worse than anything, because now I'm killing time doing something that's horribly unproductive. At least I could be doing any of a thousand things that get me closer to my values. TV is not on that chart, last I checked. So... It's funny just to see how people understand that. And then the other thing is, just like, if you read a book, you attend a course, you pay to be at a course, you come to a lecture like this, you don't immediately see the result. And if people are just used to dollar per hour work. Like I put in a dollar, I get paid, I put in an hour, I get paid a dollar or X dollars. And when now all of a sudden a person has to pay to then put in the work, to get money out. It's a weird equation. So a lot of people don't get that on the front end. But it's like, again, like I said earlier, you're building an asset, okay? You're building something that pays for the long term. And you, your practice, yourself as an engine are an asset, right? So it's worth investing in. And again, time is exponential. It compounds the effects of crappy decisions. Let me show you one other thing that's worth 
looking at. So let's look at like effect horizon, okay? This is like, um, this will be time. This will be something that's uh, positive, negative. If I do something that's positive in the short term, like eat that burger instead of going to the gym, I'll feel great right now. But then what it will do over time is this. It will hurt me in the long term. If I do something that sucks right now, like going to the gym, it's not much fun now, but in the long term, I'll be fit, healthier, and so on. So this is what happens. But this is not, it's not like, it's not linear. Every time you make a decision on this path, you have these little decision nodes, but these then feed back on each other and compound this over time. So it's not like, well, okay, I screwed around for like six years and I can make up for it. This is like seriously damaging because it now it sets you back substantially, compounds, it's exponential. Mistakes made early pay long term. You have less time to play the game. Okay, now you still have a lot of time based on our earlier numbers, but it's nice if you can get this and make the decision and change it now, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So again, just to simplify all of that, it's like take the hill when you can. The thing about that is if you're used to taking hills, you don't shy away from it. You get better at it. It's like going to the gym. The more you go, the more you can do. And eventually you'll end up crushing everyone around you because they see the hill and like, oh man, let's find a way around that. And you see the hill and like, oh, let's do the hill. What, what the heck? And this is how we've outlasted everyone in our area because even if people want to complain, they'll get tired of complaining. Well, I just won't stop. I, it's no problem. I built a process around that. I now have a, I have people who can just handle complaints. In fact, if you're in Ontario, there's a place that you ought to be a part of, a membership that you ought to be a part of that literally you just forward them the thing and they deal with it if you have a problem. So there's there's a few, there's one really good one in the States like that too. <clears throat> so, you know, you just, you focus on what you need to focus on and everyone else will try to do what they do, but it'll outlast them all if you're used to taking hills and they're used to taking the easy road. So train yourself to get good at that. And just to dig into this, Warren Buffett's net worth, <clears throat> most of it was created in the last few years, not linearly over time. Most people don't, don't dig into this enough. Look at it. I think I have a chart that follows. Okay, this is Warren Buffett's net worth with age. Okay? Most people think it would be like this. It's not even close. It's the compounding of that over time. Your decisions over time. Discipline decisions over time. This is what happens. So over the years, just between the age of 58 and 72, I mean, just look at the, like, that's incredible, you know? It's a short span considering his entire lifespan. So the effect of compounding over time in your decisions. I found that really interesting when I was researching this. I was like, wow, that really just drives home the you know, the effect horizon of your decisions now. <clears throat>